All right guys, welcome to today's video, which is half unboxing and half how to. This is gonna be how to bag your car for five to $600. This air suspension kit is going on my 1987 Mercedes-Benz 300 SDL. It's an extended wheelbase chassis with a six cylinder turbo diesel. Okay, so we're gonna start with the compressor, which I think is probably the most important part of the system because if you don't have a compressor, you won't have any air pressure. So this compressor was $150, and yes, there are cheaper compressors on eBay, but they won't support a very large air tank. Uh, the next one down is like $140, but from what I read, it only supports a one gallon tank, and I wanna run a five gallon, so I'm gonna need something this big in order to make my car no, I don't want to say that. For 150, this compressor also includes a very nice relay. It looks to be weatherproof. You can see it's all sealed up. And also a pressure switch. This particular pressure switch turns on at anything under 150 PSI, and then it turns off at 180. It also comes with this little filter for the air inlet so that uh, it doesn't suck up too much moisture or any dirt or anything like that that'll ruin your compressor. That just screws onto the front. Like that. The other difference between this compressor and a cheaper one is that this one comes with, I believe this is a 3 8 lead line, and the other one that was slightly cheaper only came with quarter inch, which is way too small. Also have a built-in check valve, and that's a swivel fitting on there. Thanks. I'm gonna put that in. All right, while we're talking about the compressor, I figured I'd pull out the air tank. This one is five gallons. It has, ugh. it's also steel, not aluminum. This one has four ports, two on each end, and then a quarter inch drain port on the bottom. And that guy was $70, and I believe that was the cheapest five gallon air tank I could buy. Got a little bit of stuff stuck on it and a nice big handprint. There we go. Not much to say about that other than hopefully it looks good in the trunk and uh, hopefully it doesn't leak. Okay, now for the bags, which admittedly is where I definitely cheaped out. I bought the cheapest bags I could. These are four 2,500 pound, also known as six inch bags, but don't be fooled. Six inches is more or less talking about the width of the bag. Uh, these actually have a little over eight inches of travel up and down. I also went with six inch bags because the suspension on my car is actually pretty like tightly squeezed together. So I wasn't sure a bigger bag would actually fit, especially in the front. Front Mercedes suspension is kind of weird. So these are the ones I went with and it was $150 for all four. Going along with the bags, tank and compressor, we need a way to mount it to the car itself. And that's what these are for. This is a universal cup kit. You get a nice big piece of tubing and then your plates. So the plates are what bolt onto the bag like this. Well, I don't know if that was in, in frame. The plates are what bolt onto the bag like this. You can see these two holes here are just the mounting holes and then that's the hole where the air goes through. So you use this to weld the plate to, and then this will take up some of the space left by your spring. So based on how long you make this is how low your car will be when it's all the way aired out and how high it'll be when it's all the way aired up. So that's just careful measuring involved, making sure these cups are the right size. I'll definitely be cutting those down because I want my car to be very low. So this kit came with basically enough to make two or four cups, depending on how low you're gonna go. 
In addition, I bought some extra top and bottom plates. So I properly use the scissors. Let's open this. So once again, this is what bolts to the bag. And it looks like these will just about work. And they're a little bit bigger than these, which I kind of actually like, because now I get to choose which ones fit better. I'll probably be using the smaller ones in the front because there's less room, but these bigger ones might actually help me out in the back where it needs to fill up that spring cup so I can weld it in. So here we got two bottom ones. You can see they don't have the hole for the air fitting and then two top ones. The cup kit also came with this all thread with some pretty big washers and nuts so that you can bolt the cup to the car. So basically if you go over a big bump or something, the cup can't slip out and move around. This will keep everything solid. Uh, I don't know if I'll be needing that. I might just be like welding the cup up to the car. But if I can make a bolt in and out, that would be cool. Almost forgot to name the price on the cup kit. The two posts and these four smaller plates and the bolts were $65. And then the extra bottom and top plates was another 35. Okay, now we have this box, which is all of our lines and fittings. I'll start with the line. This is quarter inch outer diameter line. I got 50 feet of it, which I hope is enough for the whole car. And that was $17 for 50 feet. I'd call that a pretty good deal. If you go up in size and line, like I said, you will be able to go up and down faster, but it will cost you a lot more. Uh, you'll also have to get bigger valves, which is the real thing. Going to the valves, this is what makes the system actually cheap. These are manual paddle valves. Uh, I only got two because I just want the front half and the back half of the car to be controllable. I'm not trying to do all four corners. You could though if you bought two more of these valves. But I'm keeping it simple. It was $30 for both of these. Very simple plumbing. Two fittings on the back. And you just go up to go up, go down to go down. The little hole right here is an exhaust hole. So you literally just put this in line with whatever half of the car you want. So again, $30 for two manual valves. Uh, that takes care of the management. These two fittings are quarter inch push to connect. And what these two will go to is the tank. So from the tank, we'll run these two with airlines for the front and the back. Then I had to buy uh, one plug because I was only gonna use three out of the four ports on the tank, um, but five was the same price as one, so I just bought a bag of five. Uh, and these are just little Allen wrench plugs that will plug up unused ports on the tank. And finally, we have one of the most important parts, the T's. Quarter inch push to connect. These are all metal. There are plastic ones that you can get for cheaper, but uh, I suggest going with a higher quality piece like this. Basically, you're gonna use a whole bunch of these in this system, so I'm gonna explain it all after the fact, because I think we only have two more things to go over. Uh, yes, I was right. Uh, one of my pack of fittings came with a free tubing cutter which you'll need because you need a very flush cut on that airline in order for it to seal with the push connect fittings. And then you're also gonna need liquid thread sealer. I have this left over from my nitrous kit install. So for me, this was free, but you could get this at any hardware store. Even like some big box stores will have this. Uh, this is much easier to use and much better than Teflon tape. And on my bags, it actually says that it's recommended to use liquid thread sealer. And that's it. So I'm sure I'll have it up on the screen somewhere, but all this stuff together was $600. Like slightly under 600, but 600 with tax. And uh, if you cheaped out on making your own cup kit, like getting the metal yourself and making that yourself, and if you got plastic fittings over these metal ones, 
and maybe like a lower quality ones of these because these are like super high quality um, if you cheaped out you could put this all together for 500 I just wanted a, an easier fabrication time and a little bit higher quality fittings so I put that extra hundred into it and making it six hundred dollars that's still extremely cheap to put a car on air suspension. When you look at pre-made kits, a lot of them are in the thousands. I know the pre-made kit for my Honda Fit is like four grand. Uh, all that stuff is ridiculous to me. I don't have that much money. So this, if it works good, will be awesome. Okay, so I mocked up a little setup to show you how I'm gonna run these bags. Basically, I'm gonna have one switch for the front of the car, one switch for the back. I'm going to take both bags, put them to a T, and that's going to go to the port on the valve marked delivery. And then, of course, the one marked supply is going to go to our air supply tank. Same thing for the back. Supply, delivery to the bags, one T, and into the bags. And if you have it hooked up correctly, moving the valve up should raise the car, moving the valve down should lower it. It's actually that simple. This is about as simple as a bag setup as you could ever make. On the other side of the tank, compressor runs into there. Got our pressure switch, which will control our relay to turn the compressor on and off. Uh, if you don't know how to wire up a relay, I've basically gone over it in my electric car wiring video. If not, um, there's plenty of videos explaining how relays work. They're basically just safer switches. And that's realistically everything. Uh, the hard parts of doing bags are going to be making the actual mounts for the bags to bolt into the car And then of course getting under the car and running all these lines Correctly making sure nothing's going to rub you have to absolutely make sure the bags don't rub on anything So it's a lot of trial and error to get it set up, right? But this is a look at how simple Doing it with a manual pedal valve actually is I should also note that you can run gauges to determine what pressure you want to run your bags at and to make sure you don't uh, over inflate them I guess but because I'm trying to do this on the cheap I just skipped that and I'm gonna run them at wherever it feels like it rides good okay guys so if you like this video please subscribe because I will be installing this system on my 1987 300 SDL it's gonna look sick hopefully it drags the car on the ground which is what I want and uh, if you want to buy any of these pieces or piece together your own kit, uh, most of these parts will be in the description below with a link to eBay or Amazon, where, wherever I can find it cheaper. So I'll put that info in the description for you guys. Once again, thanks for watching. And that's going to be it.